Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, so abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day, earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can Good morning, everybody, and welcome to church. Uh, this beautiful Sunday morning. I'd like to share with you Psalm 105 from verses, reading verses 1 to 4. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Let's pray. Loving God, as we pause on this Sunday to worship you, we are amazed at the wonders around us. We live in such a beautiful part of the world. Lord, sometimes we take it too much for granted, but we pause. We think, and we thank you for our environment. We thank you that you created life from the trees, the birds, the mammals. We thank you too that you inspired us to sing praises to you. May our voices proclaim you to the nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are two songs now, Jesus is Lord and Be Still.
Just with the announcements, I wanted to emphasise to you the importance of keeping in touch with each other. I'm excited to hear that many of you are. Uh, and often I hear someone saying, oh, somebody rang me up or visited just to see how we're going. But please keep each other in mind, keep in touch and uh, encourage and support each other. There are a lot of new terms coming in at the moment. And as we come to prayer, I just want to think about the term social distance. <laughs> and we think of that as something new, say your social distance. But really it's not, because in many years, over the years, we have kept Jesus at a social distance. And I thought about that, and I thought, well, that's what we do is sometimes we admire Jesus, we do things for Jesus, but often we find ourselves not willing to get too close because we don't know how that will influence us. And so as we come to our prayers of confession, let's just, sometimes we think our prayers of confession should involve things we've done that are terrible, but sometimes our prayers are just not trusting Jesus enough and keeping him at that distance. So let's pray. Loving God, as we come to pray, we acknowledge that quite often we, we are frightened to come too close to you just as many in the scriptures were frightened of being too closely uh, in communication with God and with Jesus. We find ourselves distancing ourselves from you. We're sometimes frightened that it means we may have to give up something. We sometimes feel too that we trust more in our own strength. So Lord, we ask this morning that we would, you would, we would take away the things that make us fearful of you, fearful to draw close to you, that we be, you would encourage us to come near, to know you better and to grow in you, that we might not be fearful but have courage, the courage that comes from knowing you and being inspired by you. So speak to us, Lord, through your spirit and when you do speak, why may we not distance ourselves from you? We pray this in Jesus' name. You taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 to 15. And Paul is writing to the Romans and he says this, Moses describes it this, in this way the righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming, that you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe it in your heart, that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile, the same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without anyone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This last 12 months has been quite um, significant, to say the least. We've had bushfires, we've had talk about global warming, we've had the coronavirus, and, uh, and lo and behold, when we think, oh, that's gone, all of a sudden we find people are demonstrating and uh, going into demonstrations about black, in the Black Lives Matter movement. And while I support people's rights to protest if they feel that they are aggrieved in some way, what disturbs me is that the protests themselves can change when the victim becomes a martyr. George Floyd was um, not a hero, he was a victim. And sometimes when we make our victims into a martyr, we start to lose essence of what we're on about. When justice becomes revenge. And sometimes I think people believe in justice, but justice becomes something where no matter what happens, they want revenge because people will never be satisfied. And when protesting becomes rioting and looting, when those things happen, I think we've lost the original intent of what we're on about and what the original protest was meant to be. And that's not anything new. There's a, a, a cycle called the monastic cycle. And what it, what it talks about is that in the fifth century, way back in the fifth century B, uh, AD, Benedict, Saint Benedict decided to set up monasteries as places of refuge for people who were in trouble, but also places for people to go and pray and be near God. Places also that were self-supporting. And the whole concept caught on and people were very diligent about what they did and how they went about their work. And they, they were well liked and favoured in the community. So much so that they grew to a position of favour. But over the, the 600 years, the, over 600 years, what happened, they moved away from their original intent of serving the poor and, serve, and coming to God closer, that they became a self-indulgent group of people. They had lost that original intent of what they were on about. And sometimes we can start out with good intent, but, so, but somewhere along the way, we lose the plot. It's interesting that um, that monastic cycle isn't limited just to um, Benedictine house. It seems that every time a person starts off with a good intent and finds they get favour, there's a danger in them becoming self-indulgent. If you look through the book of Kings, the two books of Kings, you'll find many of the kings went that way. They, uh, they started out with good intent and all of a sudden that changed. 
So what's this got to do with the Romans reading anyway? Well, the Jews that Jesus, that Peter, Paul, sorry, is addressing, the Jews had changed. The Jews had changed the gospel message because the message of love had become one of regulations. The message of grace had become one of works. The message of them being a chosen and a favoured people had become one of the Jews becoming arrogant. And it seems that these people who were priests and Pharisees had become from, came from being people who led people in faith to becoming power brokers. And so Romans is the gospel message, or Paul's gospel message, that says it's not about works. It's not about what you do. People have lost the intent of what they started out to be and it's become something of grace and faith. That's what it should be, not works. Some see this when Jesus came, that he came with a new message, a message of love and a message of grace which a lot of people think is different to the God of the Old Testament. And so we have this God of wrath in the Old Testament and this God of love in the New Testament. And we talk about it as if it's something that, that um, there's two types of God. But that's not true. If you look at it, you find God is both a God of wrath and a God of love. Both a God of wrath and a God of love. He is both Yahweh and Abba. Yahweh, the God to be revered and adored, and Abba, the God who is close to us. Some people think Jesus brought a new religion, but he didn't. When people came and they said to him, what is the greatest commandment? He dug back to the Old Testament, to Deuteronomy 6, 5, and he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. He drew it from the Old Testament, the only scriptures that were available to him. And also he added to that from Leviticus 19, 18, love your neighbor as yourself. And he was at loggerheads with the Pharisees because they had disjointed and distorted the message. So Paul writes, and it's interesting what he writes because a lot of what he writes, he is drawing on references to the Old Testament to the term of justification by faith. And I want to just briefly give you seven principles that Paul gives you. First of all, we are justified by faith. And I don't think I can emphasise that strongly enough. We are justified by faith. And when you look at um, the, the passage that it refers to in Leviticus 18.5, it says to obey. You know, we need to obey and to uh, follow. That sounds legalistic, but we need to live not by the law, but by the spirit of the law. As I think of obedience, I think of the marriage vows that I made. I promised to love, to honour, to obey. Now, I have to say, sometimes I don't honour my wife. I don't always obey my wife. But that doesn't alter the fact that I am still married to my wife. And so, sometimes we will fail in our following of Jesus. Instead of beating ourselves up, when I do something wrong to my wife, we apologise and we move on, having learned something from that experience. It is not about doing the right thing as much as about how much faith you have. And that brings me to another point. How much faith do you need? Well, Jesus said, not much. A mustard seed is enough. We are justified by faith. The second point is this. We can't earn our salvation Paul continues with a reference to Deuteronomy and says we can't go up to heaven to reach to find God. We can't reach God. And God reaches down to us. The third thing, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. That's the third principle that Paul says. It's not about what you do. It's about your heart. And the fourth thing he says, it's not just a heart thing. It's a voice thing. I have a son-in-law. And he's very quiet. How are you going? Yeah, good. Anything happening? No, not much. And that's about all you can get out of him. Until you start to talk about the football. And all of a sudden this fellow who you can't get a word out of starts to wax lyrical about the activities of the Broncos, about the teams that are at top and what's wrong with the teams. He does that because he's passionate. 
And I think when you're passionate about something, you cannot but express that in some way. Imagine being in a courtship where they never told the one you were courting that you loved them. It's a natural flow on from the thing that's in your heart. It's a voice thing. It's a heart thing and it's a voice thing. But it's also a universal thing. Paul says there is no Jew and Gentile, and I'm sure that many of the Jews, when they would have read that, would have been shocked because they saw themselves as a superior group of people. And they were never called to be that. They were a favoured group of people, but they were in no way superior. So when they're told that there is no distinction, it's Jew and Gentile. There's no distinction between um, ethnicity at, about race or, or about status. We are all under the same thing of faith, coming to Christ by faith. The sixth principle is that people need to hear this. In verses 14 and 15, it says that. And I love the way Paul puts it. How can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. People need to hear the gospel message today. People need to hear it clear and loud. I'm amazed how many people have absolutely no idea of what the Christian faith is about. They think they do. But we have this priceless treasure and we need to share it. We need to give it out. Which brings me to the seventh point. G. Paul is in fact saying, thank God for the proclaimers. Thank God for those who proclaim the good news. Which brings us to ourselves. Are you on task? And we need to assess ourselves every now and then. Am I doing what Christ desires of me? Or have I distorted the message to become a moral, uh, a moral message of Christ? Or have I distorted it to become living by rules? It is that by grace we are saved through faith. Paul emphasises that and how lovely it is that we should know that and do it. Let's pray. Loving God, as we come to pray this morning, we pray for those who have not heard the good news, for people who are walking in darkness, for people, we pray for people who are searching, for people who are reaching out and trying to find some purpose in life, but they find most of life meaningless. We pray for those who think they know a little bit about the gospel, but have not heard the clear message. And they see it as a, a gospel of do's and don'ts, a gospel of rights and wrongs, a gospel uh, that victimises people who don't fit in. Lord, we, we pray, we pray that these people would hear the good news, the good news of Christ, that Christ is risen, that Christ will come again, that Christ who is our judge is also our salvation. Lord, we pray and we pray that if you have called us to share that gospel with anyone, that we would be obedient to the call of that, that we would share the news, the beautiful news we have of you and your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take up the offering now, or we'll um, just say a prayer over the offering, and we continue as you continue to bless us with your gifts. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for that it represents what we are prepared to give you. So Lord, speak into our hearts and give us generous hearts of our time and our abilities to those who may need it, but also give us an ear to hear where you want us to be. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comfort 
spirits flee. Help of the helpless, so abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can for the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be? Through clouds and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Hills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is destiny? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's faint shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide.